Hi there. This is a brief overview of the Tamina Towns framework that is part of the Matchup Interreg Europe project commissioned to us by the Southern Regional Assembly. The Tamina Town concept came about through the Southern Regional Assembly's role on the EU Matchup project, which will help implement the Regional Spatial and Economic Strategy, or RSES. One of the key objectives of the RSES is to promote the Tamina city and town concepts across settlements in the Southern region to the benefit of placemaking and sustainable mobility particularly in setting a framework for good practice to implement Regional Planning Objective 176, which is the Terminate City and Town Concepts. In achieving the Terminate Town Concepts, this framework assists the Southern Regional Assembly's achievement of the RSES and in particular the five elements, compact growth, sustainable mobility, a strong economy, low carbon, climate resilient and sustainable society, and last, but certainly not the least, sustainable, planned and infrastructure-led development. It is important to note that sustainability is not just about moving to sustainable modes of transport, but also to focus on reducing the need for transport by allowing people to have access to all the services they need in their day-to-day -day lives by walking and cycling. We were commissioned by the Southern Regional Assembly in February to create a 10-minute town framework for the three towns, Carlo, Ennis and Trelli. The local authorities were well briefed on the progress throughout and we also received their input during the process. The assistance given to us by the local authorities for the three case study towns was greatly appreciated. These are the overall purposes of the framework. It is to create a framework for good practice guidance, so it can be used by other towns to map and adapt the same Temet town concept. And we should also note that this is not a policy or land use document, so the local authorities can, at their discretion, use the findings of this work to inform any policy documents, land use plans and transport studies. The framework can also be used as an implementation tool to um, assist the local authorities to undertake a 10-minute town assessment. We now move on to the methodology that is used to assess the 10-minute town concept. As the 10-minute town concept is focused on providing convenient access to all of the services that are required in the day-to-day -day life of residents in a given town. This starts off with collecting the location of each of the facilities in question in that town. So these include healthcare, education, retail, leisure, and public transport. Many of these data sets are available nationally from the relevant department websites, such as the Department of Health and the Department of Education, while others, such as for retail and leisure, can be derived from data in open sources, such as OpenStreetMap. It is necessary to then cross-check this data on a local level through site visits, as some of the data sets may be incomplete or out of date to ensure that the analysis is as accurate and thorough as possible. Once the locations of facilities are determined, the next step is to overlay them on top of the street network for the town in question. So the street network can be derived from a number of sources, but a comprehensive open source source is available from OpenStreetMap for any location in the country. This is fed into a GIS process to allow the catchments for the facilities in question using the street network of the town to be analyzed. In this case, the GIS software that was used was ArcGIS and the network analyst extension of that was used in this case. The results of this analysis for samples for each of the three towns in questions is displayed on this slide. It is apparent from these images that at present there is room for improvement in the accessibility for pedestrians and cyclists within each of the three towns that were analysed in this study. So in some cases the issues arise from a lack of services in given areas of the town and in other cases they arise from a lack of permeability in the vicinity of the facility in question and this therefore causes distances which are relatively short as the crow flies to become quite long on the street network and therefore unattractive for 
for people to walk or cycle to the facilities. Some of the key findings were the severance that is caused by lack of permeability between neighboring residential areas. So this often causes trips that are short as the crow flies to become quite long on the street network, which has the effect of dissuading people from using sustainable modes such as walking and cycling to travel within the towns. There's also a lack of direct accesses for pedestrians and cyclists from some estates, particularly in more suburban areas. And then this in turn causes the distances to become longer and dissuades people from walking and cycling. Analysis of the census um, indicates that cycling has a very low mode share in each of the three towns for commuting purposes, with only a 1% share at present. Public transport services are quite limited in each of the three towns. So in Tralee, there is a town's bus service, but that each of the two routes only runs on an hourly basis, which is not particularly attractive for those who have an alternative of a car. And in the other two towns, the only public transport it runs along a particular corridor in the town, and many areas are not in proximity. In addition, it is apparent that there is poor walking and cycling infrastructure in some parts of each of the three towns. So the cycling infrastructure is discontinuous and the quality of the infrastructure that is there is often not of a particularly high standard. And this again can dissuade people from considering cycling for trips within the town. In some cases, footpaths are not necessarily present on both sides of the road or the quality of the footpath is uh, not ideal and this again can dissuade people from using more sustainable modes. And in some parts of the towns, certain areas can be quite isolated from services. So based on this, there are a number of opportunities that have been identified to improve the applicability of the 10 minute town concept in each of the three case study towns. So for example, Walking and cycling routes can be provided along and across rivers. So for example, along and across the River Barrow in Carlow and the River Fergus in Ennis. And this would help to make crossing points more direct and allow pedestrians and cyclists to have more convenient journeys between their origin and destination points, making these modes more attractive. Um, there's also potential for adjacent residential estates to have connections opened up between them, which would allow for much shorter journeys by walking and cycling, and in turn encourage more sustainable modes within the towns. Next, there is an opportunity to improve bus services. So these may be from uh, improving the frequencies of existing services or from providing new local services, and in some cases, new bus stops along routes which have a minimal number within the town at present. And there's the possibility to improve the extent of the existing walking and cycling facilities in the town and to provide more coherent networks that again, will encourage people to walk and cycle. We thought we'd show you a few examples of our recommendations which, which can be found in our report. I have some examples in Carlo and as shown on the screen that one of the constraints we identified is that there are no formalized accesses between Kennedy Avenue and Hanover Street. Therefore, one of the recommendations is to provide formal walk and cycle connections via Pennies and Hanover Park for pedestrian cycling safety and amenity. Another recommendations we've included in the report is to provide additional walking and cycling access points from Southern Gardens, so the residential area here, to Kilkenny Road. This is to provide more access options for residents to, to access Kilkenny Road, which is the main through route to the town centre. This shows an example of one of the constraints we identified in Ennis, which is the lack of connectivity between the residential estates and potential river walkways. Therefore, our recommendations are to provide a green walkway along River Fergus, which includes potential connections between residential estates. These residential estates also have the potential to, to be accessible along the main road, therefore to open up the residents to be able to access from both sides of the, of the area. 
So here is another example of some recommendations from Tralee. So in this case, this is the greenway that runs along the route of the former Tralee to Fennet Railway. So as it passes through the northwest of the town, uh, the greenway route is lined by walls and fences and is cut off from the adjacent residential areas. So not alone does this provide a barrier between two sections of the town, uh, dissuading people from walking or cycling between them and in, instead encouraging driving as the distance has become excessive. It also prevents convenient access for residents in these areas to an important amenity and a safe route to walk and cycle towards the centre of the town. So by opening up some connections between the Greenway route and the residential areas adjacent, walking and cycling would become more attractive modes for people in this area of the town. And then to summarise the, the process again, this is the framework for the 10 minute town concept. So to begin with, the relevant data is collected. So this consists of the locations of the relevant facility types and the street network of the town in question. Then in GIS, the network is built. So in this case, uh, ArcGIS and network analysts were used to do this. And then once the network is built, the catchment of the facilities can be determined. So in this case, it was done for five and 10 minute walk and cycle catchments. On doing this, it is possible to identify some of the issues in the towns in question. So this can include areas where severance or lack of connections between adjacent areas is apparent and also areas that are underserved by particular facilities. Also, the catchments allows for the, on the baseline conditions to be determined. So using census data, it is possible to determine what population is within the catchment of a given facility at present and, and then later on in the future. So having identified the opportunities to rectify some of the issues identified at this point, the analysis can then be rerun. And then the difference in catchment between the first and second stages can be compared and this allows the improvements as a result of the analysis to be determined. This concludes the presentation on the 10 minute town concept. Um, further details are available in the full report.